Hey guys, Vikas over here and this is Weird Genius. Guys, today I am again with a new video around Raspberry Pi. We will see how to interface MCP3208 with the Pi. MCP3208 basically an ADC which comes with 8 channel inputs, 12 bit resolution and SPI interface. And as you know, the Pi doesn't have analog support on board. The MCP3208 can be your way around when it comes to read analog signal by your Pi. So let's check it out guys, let's get started. So guys, this is the circuit over here that we are going to connect for the MCP3208 with Raspberry Pi. So you just need a MCP3208 with bunch of jumpers and nothing else, like no any discrete components are required. Okay, so this is straightforward. We just need to connect the SPA port of your Pi to the SPA port of the MCP3208. And over here, the supplies goes like that. The DZ, DZ and D and analog ground are commonly grounded, as well as VRF and VDD are commonly connected to the VDD over here. That is 3.3 volt. And ground is connected to any ground pin you can connect into. Okay. So what I've done is actually my signal will vary whatever I'm going to provide over here into any channel between 0 to 3.3 volt or that is VDD maximum. So I can connect the reference voltage to 3.3 volt. If you are having other source like it varies with a different range, you will have to provide different VRF voltage. So it might change depending upon the circuit you are using. Same as in analog ground and needle ground, because I am having the same source as an analog supply also, I am I have connected ADND and, G, AGND and DGND into the same ground common with the GPIO over here. But if you are using a separate source for the analog signal, you need to connect the AGND to the particular source. Okay. And in the breadboard, I am going to attach one potentiometer so that I can provide analog signal to the MCP3208. And over here, I have connected the C0 into the CS pin as I am going to like uh, in my program, I am going to use the C0. So one more pin that is available that is the C1. If you want to use like multiple chips or something, you can use the C1. And if you are interested in C1 over here, you can connect it. But remember it to change in the code. Okay. Now SLK or serial clock goes to the clock pin of MCP3208. Mizu goes to Mizu. Mozi goes to Mozi. So let's connect it onto the breadboard and we'll get back to the Java ID where we will be programming to interact with the MCP3208. Uh, so guys, this is the setup that I have connected my Raspberry Pi with the MCP3208 over the SPI port interface. So let's power up uh, the Pi and we'll try to interact with this MCP3208 using Java. So after this, let's get back to the computer and we'll try to get data from MCP3208. Uh, so guys, we are done with the connection and this is a code that we are going to use to communicate with MCP3208 from our Raspberry Pi and it's all in Java. So I'll be giving a link down below so that you can download this. Uh, so over here, let's go through the code. Just try to like see if what is there inside. So this is nothing but we have created a SPA object and it's actually initialized with default that is default SPA bit and this default SPA mode along with we need to specify the CS pin. So for our configuration what we have used we have connected the CS0 pin to the MCP3208 but you can come up with CS1 also okay and this over here nothing but it just prints out the value read from channel 4 of MCP3208 onto the terminal every 2 seconds. And basically this is the function that reads data from the MCP3208. So over here I am going to use the stock SPI come up with the Raspbian OS. So to use that you can just log into your Pi and go to the configuration window and under the advanced options tab we need to enable the SPA interface. Okay. And along with that, I have used Pi4j library. So if you are interested, you can download it 
from the link given below. So basically what it does is it, we have formulated 3 bytes of code or 3 bytes of data that has to be transmitted to the MCP3208 to get back the data from any channel we request. So basically the first byte which is over here is dependent upon the channel or number of channel you want to read. So you can all just like go through the data sheet of MCP3208 and over here you can see you need to transmit these 3 bytes of data and on the second and third byte we receive the MSB and LSB of the data to be read from the MCP3208 respectively. So first byte contains start byte 1 the single, single uh, like single ended mode or differential mode and the D2, D1 and 0 value in the uh, like first and second packet and third packet is uh, simply don't care we can send 0 or anything okay now the D2, D1 and 0 value depends upon the channel you want to read so you can uh, like refer to this table on the data sheet that shows the D2 and D0, D1 values over here along with thus like you want to read in single ended mode or differential mode so these are different values corresponding to the particular channel okay so now in a code what we have done is we have created three packets or three bytes of data into one array and we are going to write it into the SPI interface in result it will provide us three bytes that has been returned by the MCP3008 so the byte 1 and 2 of the result contains our MSB and LSB respectively and over here this function what it does is it neglects the upper 4 bit of the MSB and it combines and uh, sorry it shifts uh, the 8 bit of MSB okay and over here it is combining the MSB with the LSB and the value uh, the net value is then returned so this basically will give you the sample count returned from the MCP3208 now if you are interested in certain value or so let's say you want uh, using a temperature sensor you will be interested in temperature then you need to convert it into the value okay that is being uh, like you need to map it okay so that's all this code what we are going to do is we'll compile it once and you need to like create the java application that has to be taken to the pi and we will try to run it there so don't worry this run will simply show you some error because this is windows system where i am compiling the code and the driver or whatever library i am using is dependent on linux or pi okay so simply click on export so if you are new to java you can refer my earlier tutorial to run java application on raspberry pi so we have compiled now we need to transfer this data jar and all things to the pi and we will try to run the particular application on the pi so this is currently showing you the sample counts let's try to change the potentiometer that has been connected to the MCP3208 so you can see whenever I am changing the potentiometer the value is getting changed so it varies between 0 to 4095 that is because it is providing us a 12 bit resolution so that's all of this thank you guys thanks for watching hey guys it's me once again and hope you have liked my video if so just hit the thumbs up button or if you don't there is a thumbs down button for you also and don't forget to subscribe my channel for latest updates okay see you next time with my new content that's all guys thank you thanks for watching